Alright guys, in this video what we're going to do is um, we're going to be able to edit a contact and so this is going to be a fairly easy video as well. I hope you guys are seeing how quick um, having this framework is and just how clean the code looks. I mean look at this details page. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, streamlined. Alright, um, so what we're going to do is we want to go back to the index and in the actions we're going to add one more button uh, and we're going to add it before our other button so we're going to do uh, a link All right, and this link what we're going to do is um, we're going to give it a we're going to send it to uh, project root contacts edit and then we're going to have a parameter on that edit action of the contact ID. We're going to give this a class. We want this to be a button as well. So we'll just do button and we'll do button. I don't know for this one. Let's do, I don't know. How about info? Sure. And then we'll do button extra small. And then what we're going to do is uh, we'll add a glyphicon. and let's use pencil alright <clears throat> and then we'll say edit so let's take a look at that table alright so now we have an edit button and a delete button the edit button should actually take us to edit so let's go here and edit jewels and we don't have an edit yet so that's what we expected so we're all good there um, I am gonna do something here these should be hovering when you go over it to make it easier to see what row you're on so let's just really quickly uh, go to our, since we're in our index page anyway let's look here um, let's do table hover I think that's what it is yeah so we added another class to the table called table hover and now when you hover over the rows it kind of highlights whichever one you're on so I think that makes it a little easier to see what row you're on so we're gonna go ahead and edit jewels and we don't have that action set up yet so let's add that action to the con contacts controller head on over to the contacts controller and let's put this underneath add so public function edit action this will take in the ID as a parameter and so the first thing that we have to do is get our contact and make sure we have a contact so we're gonna say contact is equal to this contacts model and we're gonna use our same uh, find by ID and user ID so we'll, again we will cast that to an integer ID and then current user ID and then what we're going to do is we're going to if not contact let's just um, do router redirect and we'll redirect back to the contacts page okay um, let's just test that out. If I refresh, okay there's nothing here and there's nothing here because we haven't created a view or anything but we don't ha we didn't get redirected so it did find that. Okay uh, the next thing we want to do here is let's just set up our we're gonna use a form so let's go ahead and set up our validation stuff so um, validation is going to equal a new validate alright and then what we want to do is um, uh, set up our stuff for a view so this view uh, display errors is going to equal validation display errors and then we'll do this view contact is 
going to equal to contact and then we need our post action we're using our same partial um, so we need to do a post action here and that's going to equal uh, project root contacts uh, ds edit uh, ds and then contact ID so it's going to post back to the same exact action and it's going to make sure the ID gets passed along as well and then we just need to render our view so this view render contacts edit and uh, so we need to add that view and so the view is going to be super easy because we've already created the form once before we get to actually just use it now um, so let's go ahead and in the views in the contacts directory we'll add a new file and we're going to call that edit.php and here we go let's do a um, this set site title and we'll just say edit contact alright and then we'll do this start body skip down a few lines and do this end and um, we only need a couple things here so let's set up a div with a class of call medium 8 again we're going to use the same kind of uh, look that we've had on similar pages all right and we'll also give this a back button um, although I don't really think that's necessary we're not going to do back button but we will do an h2 and I think a little bit of class would go a long way here so what we're going to do is give it a class of text center and we're going to say edit but instead of just saying edit contact let's go ahead and do uh, the name of the contact so we're going to do uh, this contact display name all right and then guess what guys the only other thing we need to do is insert our partial so this partial is going to live in the contacts and we're using our same one so it's just a form and I think that's it so let's test that refresh um, got a little problem here so I must have a typo again I just put contact instead of the plural contacts but here we go so it uses our same form from our partial earlier but you can see that it's already pre-populated with the values so um, we can cancel and that'll take us right back to this page or we can edit any of these so let's go ahead and try it let's give Jules um, an address so let's say 123 Main Street uh, apartment 112 uh, let's see let's just kind of completely fill him out here parham jewels at mailinator.com save and we have a problem and that problem is is we didn't uh, actually do the save part of it so that's really simple so what we need to do is going to be very similar to what we did in the add, but we go back to our edit action here, and we need to actually do a check for if this is posted. And if there's post data, then we're just going to do contact assign post. Okay, and then uh, we need to check validation. Okay, and we'll pass in post to that, and then we want to say contacts 
and we're going to use that same add validation. We could do different validation here for editing, but we won't. And then what we're going to say is if validation passed, then we want to save it. Contact, save, and then we'll do router redirect back to the contact screen. That should be it. So um, now we can see, let's go back to Jules, and we can see that that information is saved here. So let's try one more. Let's just add another home phone number. Hit save. Yep, uh, you can see right here that it did add that. Um, Tony, let's give her an email. Parham Tony at Mailinator dot com hit save and booyah look guys we our edit uh, is working uh, we can test just a few more things here uh, I did want to do one thing with this validation here I want to just clean up those styles and make it look a little nicer so let's go to CSS so go back to your project and let's look in the CSS directory and go to custom.css and if you remember earlier we added uh, form errors and I want to give those a border radius of 8 pixels and let's give it a margin 10 on the top 25 on the right 45 pixels on the bottom 25 on the left and let's also give it a shadow so let's do box shadow uh, we'll do 5 5 15 and we'll do uh, black with a 60% uh, opacity so what that'll do is if I refresh sure Actually, what, I'm, what we're going to have to do is clear a cache. So in Chrome, you can actually open the inspector and then right-click on the refresh and do empty cache and hard reload. Okay. Uh, border radius didn't seem to work, so let's look at that. Uh, let's just clean up this too real quick. Um, let's do form errors uh, style the list item a little bit so let's give it a list style of none and let's do a font size of 16 pixels let's try that real quick so I'm gonna clear my cache So let's actually do that because man this is just ugly and I'm only doing it ugly like this because I'm tired. I'd rather get rid of this and what we'll do here is break there and we're going to do, um, we'll say has errors. okay? And then what we're going to do is this is going to be has errors and we'll still do our ternary operator exactly the same so if not empty this errors um, then we're going to give it a new class of has errors and we can get rid well let me copy all of this so we don't lose this 
but then we can just get rid of this whole line uh, I'm missing something here um, missing a single quote there we go all right so then what we're going to do is in our custom CSS we're going to uh, do dot has you know what we'll do we'll do um, dot form errors if, if it's form errors and it has has errors class let's see if I did it that way yep has errors then we're gonna do this stuff so just do padding border alright so this once we refresh I'm gonna do empty my cache just to make sure dang it forgot my equal there Do that. There we are. Perfect. Now, if cancel that, we'll just go here. Yep, that's better. Now we're actually using some a, a class, and we are instead of changing our display errors inside of a validate to something. We can just give it a class and then in our future projects if we want different styles it's not in this stupid thing we have to go and figure that out later so that's a much smarter way to do that um, so don't even listen to the way that I did it before that was really dumb and I do dumb things like that when I'm tired I call this tired night Curtis programming uh, which is really dumb and you should never do that um, so I shouldn't have done this video but I did because I wanted to finish this because it's been a year and a half and dang it you guys deserve it to be done and I've got some really exciting stuff that I'm going to be announcing that I want to jump on and get going with you guys so I wanted to finish this series and now I've done it unless there's some bugs or something that we need to squash later this will be the last video I love you guys thank you I hope this has helped you understand what an MVC framework is and the power of having a framework and um, just building a quick app like this it, it, it I think it's really cool so with that guys thank you so much for uh, taking this journey with me I hope you've enjoyed me leaving all my mistakes in so that you can see a little bit more what it's like um, to actually program and and make mistakes and things like that um, and you're not just copying code you see some of the debugging stuff you see uh, uh, a developer like me who I'm a senior level developer but I'm still making mistakes I'm still looking stuff up on Google and Stack Exchange that stuff's normal guys it's totally fine I think a, a lot of new developers kinda get it in their head that um, they have to remember everything and um, that's kinda crippling and it's just not true um, and that's what happens when you know people like me make YouTube videos and we figured it all out ahead of time and then we just copy the code so um, what I'm really excited about to go on a journey with you guys is I'm going to start doing live videos, live streams, and we're just going to build stuff live. And I'm going to make tons of mistakes. I'm going to do all the research right there. Um, I think it might be boring sometimes for some people, but I think it's going to actually teach you the process of developing a lot better and how to debug and how to research things and figure it out as you go. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing next with you guys. We're going to rebuild the e-commerce site, probably use an MVC framework, probably CodeIgniter I'm thinking at this point. Um, and we're going to do it with object-oriented programming and we're going to build up an e-commerce site uh, with all of that. And we're going to do it live uh, right there on the screen with you. So I hope you guys are excited. I hope this has been a cool series for you. Have a wonderful day. I'm out.